Hey there folks, Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. We got mail. Santee, can you do a Dressing the Part episode on gamblers? Justin Solaris. Hmm, we can do that. By the way folks, Justin Solaris is one of our young viewers and he's already got the outfit. Take a look up there. Pretty cool, Justin. Although you're starting a little young in the gambling field, don't you think? No? Huh? Roll them. In the Old West, like today, gambling was either a pastime or a career. In the early 1800s, the term riverboat gambler surfaced. Professional card players rode up and down the rivers in the steamboats, playing a game of chance and earning a great living. They were often characterized as bold and non-ethical. However, Canada Bill Jones, a famous card sharp and confidence man, was seen giving money to the occasional charity and apparently was very well liked. Which is interesting seeing as Bill was a three card money specialist, which is a con game where the mark never wins. Luck be a lady tonight. Luck be a lady tonight. Gamblers were often seen in boom towns in the West. The money was flowing and they were fleecing their marks. Some cheated, others did not, but it was a very profitable living if one had the skill. Welcome to Quake City, Mr. Donovan. Looks like luck's against you. Well, there's one good thing about luck. It always changes. And I've got a feeling that mine is just around the corner. Many of them even own their own gambling establishments or saloons. Now, Hollywood would have us think of all frontier high rollers as fancy dressed dandies. Well, that is true in some cases. Successful men and women gamblers could afford nice attire and tended to apply their trade in the finer establishments where the clientele was richer. 500. Must be a peach of a hand. Bat Masterson, Luke Short, Doc Holliday, Lottie Denno, and Poker Alice are examples of these finely dressed gamblers. A silk brocaded vest and puff tie with a jeweled tie pin can really set off this outfit. You would also want to dress your hat like a derby or a homburg. For the women, an outfit befitting a saloon madam would be appropriate. But Canada Bill was not a fancy dresser. At times he was known to dress like a vagabond. This was probably a good look for some of the lower end establishments he frequented. A coat is an important article of clothing. First, it was very common in the Victorian era to wear one, and it was practical. Gamblers took people's money, and some were not good sports about it. In violent situations, the jacket could conceal weapons quite well. You play them cards, fancy Dan. My name is Bill. Oh, the coat can also hide cheating devices, like this one. So, in dressing the part, think about what kind of gambler you are and what establishment you frequent. Get yourself a nice pocket watch and work on pulling that ace out of your sleeve without anyone seeing. Hey! I don't hate my fellow man, even when he's tiresome and surly and tries to cheat at poker. I figure that's just the human material. Well folks, that's it for another episode. Thanks for watching. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on down the track.